this is our planned edition. This part right here is the original, right now what we have. This section over here is our new addition. This will go from the property we have now uh, across to the other side of our property. And this will be the first floor, this area right here. This will be the basement, which would be under here. And then we'd have the open section up above here, which would be the third floor. The um, museum will have a boat uh, effect right here. This boat um, would look like it was part of the museum, but it would also give the folks that were in the area a chance to ride around the area behind the museum on a bike trail here. The split in the trail would go through the museum here and through the bow of the ship and around the front this way, then continue on from here all the way over to uh, Walnut Beach if you were coming from that direction, uh, or going to that direction, I'm sorry. Now, in this case, we have uh, these doors that will be able to be shut and shut this off on both sides. When we shut it off, uh, you would be, there would be times when we're not open or we're not here uh, through the winter maybe or something like that. But then at that time, you still have access to the trail by going around this way but we would also have sprayers on each side of the bow here, spraying back to make the ship look like it's going to go across the trail in front of you. Uh, those sprayers would be operating, uh, throwing water up as if the ship was going through the water. Our addition right now is placed at $4 million. Uh, we have uh, ask, actually looking for $6 million so that we can have the old building, which is this part here, this building would be the original light keeper's home and the assistant keeper's home. So we'd like to turn it back into what it originally was and that's part of the uh, fund. And then the other fund would be to keep it uh, available money for any emergencies and that type of thing that we would have to have happening uh, off, off regular um, operating funds. We have uh, a group of people put, put together right now who are in the process of getting this done. So uh, we, we may get from many different sources being foundations and grants and that's that type of thing. You have an estimate as to when you want to see it done? I want it done tomorrow. <laughs> but in, in reality, we probably won't start asking for funds until uh, the end of the uh, summer. This is the uh, bell from the USS Ashtabula. The USS Ashtabula is a US Navy ship that operated in the Pacific during World War II, the Vietnam War, and the uh, uh, Korean War. It then uh, was uh, tried to be scrapped. This, the scrapping did not go well. The company went bankrupt, so they ended up deciding the Navy decided to take it out and actually do a sinking of it. We have a, a movie here that we do run. It's about a 30 minute movie that shows uh, how they shot shells and missiles and whatnot at it. And with that, they actually tried to use it as just a way of training the other ships that were in the area. They brought them out there for that function. Then she, she was put down by a uh, depth charge or a charge on the side of it blew a hole in the side of her and took her down. Now, because Ashtabula means many, river of many fish, now she is a home for many <laughs> fish down at the bottom of the, of the ocean. This is our display of the whaleback meteor uh, and other whalebacks. The meteor is the only one that's look, that you can look at today, and this is it in its heyday. On the very bottom picture on the other side over there, you can see it in the uh, museum where it's located today. That's up in Lake Superior area. We have these models here to show you what it was like. At the bottom, you can see the only one of the, of the uh, whalebacks that actually was very similar to today's sailing ships for passengers. It was the only one built that way. This is the Car Ferry Ashtabula. The Car Ferry Ashtabula sank in Ashtabula Harbor in September of 1958. 
this uh, car ferry, most people think about when you hear car ferry, of taking an automobile from one side of the lake to the other. In this case, these, these car ferries were used to take uh, railroad cars of coal from Asheville Harbor to Port Burwell in Canada. She went every day from 1906 to 1958. She did not run in the wintertime. She was usually the last boat or ship to leave the harbor and come back in, in the spring and come back in the next fall before they closed it down for the winter. This is our display of the New York Central. We just really getting started with some of the railroad items here that we've had for years and years in the harbor. But here we have the New York Central plates that were donated by one of our members, uh, Sanford Jacobs. He decided to start to supply us with some of his uh, collection. We have uh, a light and some other items from the railroad. Next to it here, we have the um, dispatcher's desk for the LS and MS Railroad. This was the last dispatcher's desk here in Ashtabula, and one of our local fellows, uh, Bob Howe, uh, donated this from his great-great-grandfather. What would date would that date back to? It would be, well, just before the New York Central purchased them, so it's very, very close to the turn of the century that they were still operating and then after that in the 20s and that they started to diversify other railroads purchasing them. This is the Pennsylvania Railroad dock. Uh, we talked about the car ferry Asheville a little bit earlier. That was run by the Pennsylvania Railroad. They also had a dock here. The New York Central had a dock here. So you had two railroads competing for service and this was the dock for the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad. These are called fast plants and then there's some other equipment that's very similar to these called Hoover Mason. And these uh, Hoover Mason were actually way of unloading the ships uh, that were coming into the dock and taking the iron ore out of the ship and putting them into a trough or pit behind the uh, equipment. And then the ore dock that you see here behind that had a gentleman on a, on a uh, little car underneath the track of the, of the bridge and he could move back and forth under there, pick the ore up out of the trough or the um, pit here and then take it out and put it on the dock of the, of the harbor. This uh, model was donated to us by Lawson Stevenson in, in uh, Asheville Township and it was actually laid out pretty much the way the harbor was in the 1950s, late 1950s. So we were able to use that in, along with some of the photographs. And if you look over here on the wall, we have a overhead view of the harbor. And the section of the harbor right in there is what you're looking at here in the uh, foreground with the uh, display, this layout. This layout shows you the cars of coal coming in and being run up here to the coal loading machine. Then they would be loaded into the ship uh, from here and then down here at this end uh, we have something that one of our members John Sandberg come up with we had missed along the way which was getting the uh, limestone unloaded from the ships and put into cars and shipped out of the harbor from from this area here in the harbor right next to this would be where the old low, uh, the Coast Guard station is uh, still located here in the Ashtabula Harbor. This would be the Ashtabula River along here and then just a second we'll show you the other side of this which would be the slip, one of the slips here in the harbor. We're on the other side now. We have a slip here and if you remember we looked at the picture earlier, the overhead view, and it showed that dock having a slip on one side and the Ashtabula River on the other. This would be the slip and if you happen to notice I think he can get this camera down a little bit closer and you can see the name of this ship in the harbor is called the Edmund Fitzgerald. She used to come into Ashtabula quite often so basically it would have been here in this spot unloading at the Hewlett's. We had four Hewlett's here on this side of the slip and on the other side of the slip we would have had four more. So we had eight, a total of eight slip, eight car ferry, uh, I'm sorry, eight, redo. Here in the harbor we had eight Hewlett's 
that would be able to unload two ships at the same time here in this slip. Here in the middle you have an ore bridge. The ore bridge here is very similar to the one that we have at the Pennsylvania dock. And you have underneath that a gentleman in the bottom here with a uh, bucket and he can go back and forth on that. Come over here under the uh, hewlets and actually empty the uh, trough or pit here and take the ore and put it on the dock here. This is the Fresnel lens. This is the Ashtabula Lighthouse original light. This is a fourth order light. Uh, this fourth order would be somewhat smaller than what is called the first order, which was big enough that a person standing by it could actually get inside of it and still stand up. That's how huge a first order light is. The fourth order would have been used around the Great Lakes for actually guiding ships into the different harbors. This one was the Ashtabula Harbor, of course, that it was guiding. We have a top plate here that actually turned so your light did not flash as we have it flashing now. It actually flashed every time the light went past your face and this whole section would turn on top. In Ashtabula we had a group of, of fellas that were working for the federal government. They were called the U.S. Life Saving Service. They would have used this uh, Lyle gun to actually shoot out to a ship that was near the shore. If you think about it, most of your sailing ships were within sight of the shore in their activities and working. So if they weren't too far out and they were having trouble and they were going to sink, they could maybe get to them and shoot a projectile out of the front of the Lyle gun out to the ship. And then when they were on the ship, then they could use that uh, projectile to untie it take the rope that was tied to that projectile, put it on the mast of the ship, and then go from there uh, with a um, uh, bosun's chair from there to the shore. This is the uh, ship this, that sunk in Lake uh, Huron with a fellow from the Asheville area, our local uh, lone survivor from that. His name is Dennis Hale, and this was the ship that he was on and broke in half, as you saw there in the picture. Now you can see uh, on this wall we have several different things showing you uh, some of the activities, his ship, and some of the uh, things that he had to go and endure through the time that he was on the, uh, uh, this red uh, life-saving... That's like a boat? Or? It's actually a life-saving raft. Okay. It would actually fall off the ship into the water and then the guys would get on it. Right below that, you can see that the gentlemen are being saved by the... He is actually being um, calling his wife to tell her that he was okay and that he'd been rescued.